Hi guys, for today's story we're going to look at the character Daniel that um, was introduced to us last week by Elvis the Lion um, and we're going to actually kind of rewind in his life story um, and look a little bit earlier at how he came to be a slave in a foreign country um, and I thought to, for this week the best way to tell the story was to read it straight from the Bible to make sure that I don't miss out any important details and then afterwards I'm going to share a couple of thoughts about this story and how it might be relevant for you guys today and the weird situations that we find ourselves in. Okay, so I'm going to read first of all, it's from Daniel chapter 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord delivered Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, along with some of the articles from the temple of God. These he carried off to the temple of his God in Babylonia and put in the treasure house of his God. Then the king ordered Ashpenaz, the chief of court, to bring in some of the Israelites from the royal family and the nobility, young men without any physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well informed, quick to understand, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. He was to teach them the language and literature of the Babylonians. The king assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's own table. They were to be trained for three years, and after that they were to enter the king's service. Among these men were some from Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah. The chief official gave them new names. To Daniel he gave the name Belteshazzar, to Hananiah Shadrach, to Mishael Meshach and to Azariah Abednego. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine and he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself in this way. Now God had caused this official to show favour and sympathy to Daniel but the official told him I'm afraid of my lord the king who has assigned your food and drink. Why should he see you looking worse than the other young men of your age? The king would then have my head because of you. Daniel said to the guard whom the chief official had appointed over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah, Please test your servants for ten days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. So he agreed to this and tested them for ten days. At the end of the ten days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. So the guard took away their choice food and wine and they were to drink they were given vegetables to eat and water to drink instead. To these four young men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning, and Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. And at the end of the time set by the king to bring them in, the chief official presented them to Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked with them, and he found none equal to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah. So they entered the king's service. In every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom. And Daniel remained there until the first year of King Cyrus. So that's a really interesting story. Um, I was thinking about it, and I thought... Is this really all about what food we eat? And is it really telling us that we should only eat vegetables and drink water? Telling us all to be vegetarians? And I thought, no, I don't think it's really about that. Because it had that funny word in the story, defiled. And um, some of you might be thinking, I didn't really understand what that meant. Um, the problem with the king's food was not what it was. It wasn't because it was meat, and it wasn't because it was cakes and sweets and goodies and delicious things or because it was wine and it was alcohol this isn't talking about stopping drinking alcohol it, the problem with the food was because it had been sacrificed to other gods because you see these young men Daniel and his friends they were they believed in the same god we believe in and they were from Israel and they believed in the god of the Israelites and when they were taken to Babylon they had all sorts of strange gods and idols that they worshipped and what they would do is they would 
kill their animals to get their meat in worship to a foreign god. And Daniel thought, I can't eat that food because it's not honouring to God, to my God. Um, and he took a really brave step because he was a slave, he was a nobody. And he asked permission to not eat that special food he'd been given. And I thought, well, it's not really like that for us today because we have freedom of choice of what we eat. Sometimes at the moment, things might be difficult to get hold of. Maybe the shop doesn't have stock of your favourite food to eat. But most of the time, we can have access to whatever food we want. And I don't think it really matters what food we eat. Obviously, we should try to eat healthily, look after our bodies, um, it's because they're a place, to, it's a way to honour God in what we eat and drink. We shouldn't eat too much, but we can choose what we eat. So I don't think it's really about that. What this is about is doing the right thing. Doing what we know to be right, even if it's hard. And sometimes it means giving up good things. So Daniel didn't get to eat cake. He didn't get to eat lots of tasty meat. Maybe it was, ro I don't know what they had, roast lamb or anything that, that, that the king had provided. They got to have very plain things. And at this time, I was thinking about being in lockdown and how we've been asked to stay at home. And sometimes that can be hard. There are many good things that we might want to do. that They're not bad for us in themselves, going out and meeting up with our friends. Many of us are longing to do that. And many of us might be longing to do, maybe play our favourite sport that involves contact. Like maybe some of you like to play rugby or football where you're very close to your teammates. And at the moment we can't and that's hard. But actually, we need to continue to do that because it's the right thing to do. We need to stay at home and follow the guidelines we've been given. Because it's not only is it going to keep us healthy, like eating the right food kept those young men in the Bible healthy, but it's also, it's just the right thing to do and it's honouring to God. So, I want you to think about Daniel when you're finding it tough and maybe as time goes on, People are finding it hard to stick to the restrictions and maybe it's tempting to go out somewhere that you don't really need to, it's not necessary. Or maybe even some of your friends invite you to do something, maybe have a party together. And you know that it's not going to do any harm, actually it'll be quite good fun. But it's not the right thing to do and we need to keep on doing the right thing as our act of worship to the God who we love. Okay, So hopefully it won't be for too much longer. Um, and we can just keep going and doing the right thing. Save lives and staying at home, okay? See you next week.